The other day I was on McMaster car looking for a clevis, found this rod and clevis. And of course, one of the great things about McMaster car is that you can download files of the different models that you intend to use. Here I can grab a step file of this particular model. But I was taking a look at the drawing and thinking, hey, what if I wanted to model this up myself in Creo Parametric? How would I go about doing that? And here we have some of the important dimensions in here. Also, you can see some of the different ones that people might be interested in, like the shank center length and the jaw opening width and the overall width. And you can see also the figure down here for the geometry. And so I thought it might be an interesting little exercise if I went through how I would model it. And please, in the comments section, let me know what you think about my modeling technique. Here I am in Creo Parametric. I've got an assembly open for some cabling that I'm going to do in another video later on. But let's start off by clicking on the new icon in order to create the part. And for the name of the part, I'll just call it clevis for lack of ingenuity and then of course let's fill in the end the common name clevis rod end and of course as always I'm going to use my standard default template let's click the OK button I'm gonna make sure that my model tree is visible for now and turn on the display of my datum planes and I suggest that you take a look at the rod and clevis on McMaster car to see how they have the different drawings of it. And so for me, based on design intent, the feature that I'm gonna start out with is actually the geometry for the pin. So let's select a plane to sketch on. And from the mini toolbar, I can choose the sketch icon. And now I'm in sketch mode. I don't need to see my planes right now. And I'll go to a sketch view. And I'm gonna start sketching the circles for the pin diameter and the actual outside diameter. So that is good. Here we can see the different dimensions. And as usual, a lot of times the dimensions come in super huge. So I'm going to swipe a box over all of them to use the modify icon. And we've got the three different dimensions listed inside of here. For the moment, I'm going to lock the scale because I know this one I want to be a value of 0.5 for the ID and everything got real small. Then I'm gonna turn off the lock scale and I can change the other different dimensions. This one, I'm gonna change that shank center length to a value of three, and the OD, let's change that to a value of one. I'll click the OK button, and my dimensions are kinda of spaced out over here. Let's bring them in a little bit closer, just so when I zoom in, I like the dimensions to be relatively close to the geometry that I'm using. So this is good for my first sketch. A little bit more adjustment. And when I'm happy, I can use the right mouse button to bring up the pop-up menu to save the sketch and exit, also known as the green check mark. And let's see where is everything. Let's repaint. Okay, there's my sketch over there. For the first feature, I'm going to extrude it. And you can see a preview of the geometry. For context, let me turn on the plane display real quick. And for the first extrude, I'm going to extrude to a symmetric depth. And this symmetric depth is going to be for the overall width. And I'm not using the exact values that they had for that particular one. I'm just gonna make some up as I go along. Let's make this an uh, inch and a quarter. I will hit the check mark to complete that. So there is my first feature created, but now I need an opening for the jaw inside of here. Well, the easy way to do that, I'm going to use that same sketch that I created to make a second extrude. And you'll notice that because of a config.pro option, it automatically defaults to removing material. Once again, let me right click on the depth drag handle to change the depth to symmetric. And maybe I want the jaw opening width here to be 0.75. So that is good. I can hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And my first feature, or my first couple features are created. And this represents the where the pin is going to go in my clevis. So that is good for the next one. The next most important feature in my opinion, is going to be the rod end. So I'm going to start off with that. Let's cl uh, click on the datum plane called top. I'm going to hit the sketch button. 
And the sketch for this is going to be a circle. Let's make it about yay big. And we have a dimension in there. And I want the diameter of this to be 0.75. So I will double click on the value and change the number. And once again, I can use the right mouse button, hold down the right mouse button to get the pop-up menu and hit the check mark. Now with that sketch still selected, I can hit the extrude button. And the length of this, in this particular case, I'm going to use 1.125. That is good. Let's hit the check mark. And by the way, I in this first sketch, I did include the circle for where the pin is going to go. For where the rod's going to go, I'm actually going to use a hole feature later on. So there is a method to my madness and why I didn't include it in there. And so now I need the jaws in here. And to create the jaws, I'm going to create a sketch on the datum plane front in the middle. Let me click the sketch button and I'll choose front. And for the orientation, I know that I want to use this particular surface as one of my sketch references. So rather than leaving the default choices by Creo Parametric to have the datum plane called right face the right side of the screen, I'm going to choose to have this surface face the top of the screen. And now let's hit the sketch button. Let's change to our sketch orientation. I will turn off my datum plane display just to reduce my clutter. And I'm going to use a bunch of additional references in here. Let's add to the list of sketch references. I want to snap into this silhouette edge and this silhouette edge. So I will select them. If I change from shaded with edges to no hidden line, you can see the dashed lines indicating the sketch references. Ah, let's leave ourselves in no hidden line for a moment. I'm also going to select this surface over here. Let's close this. And I want to make a sketch for the shape of the jaw. It'll be easiest to use the project command just to get an entity on that edge over there. Let's close out of the project dialog box. And the next sketch is going to be a rectangle. And I'll lock it into my two sketch references and also lock into the circle. Now to get rid of the entities I no longer need, I'm going to use my friend squiggle trim or delete segment as it's called. And I'm just running my mouse over whatever I want to delete. And there I have the shape for my sketch. Let's hit the check mark to get out of here. And let's, uh, you know what, I don't need any datums displayed. Let's change back though to shaded with edges. And with that sketch selected, I'm going to choose the extrude button. And here you can see that it's extruding in one direction. And I wanted to go up to this surface over here, but be offset a little to the inside. If you were in Creo Parametric 3.0 or earlier, you'd probably be creating some additional datum planes. But in Creo Parametric 4.0 and later, that is not necessary. I'm going to go to the Options tab just to show you that right now I'm using a blind depth. I can right click over the depth drag handle and choose to select it. I'll pick this particular surface over here, but I want it offset a little bit to the inside. So you've got a drop down list that you can choose if you want to extrude to an offset of that selected reference or if you want to translate. In this particular situation, they are the same because the surface is parallel to my sketch plane. So it actually doesn't matter which one that I use. I'm going to use a small offset of like a 16th of an inch. And right now it's going in the wrong direction, so let's flip it. So that is good. In this particular case, I want to do the same thing on the other side. So I will hold down the right mouse button and then check the option for a side to depth. I will right click over the depth drag handle in the side to direction and change to to selected and pick this surface over here. And once again, I am going to offset from that a value of 0 0.0625. You could also type in one divided by 16. Let's use the flip button. So that way I've got the jaw going where I want. Let's hit the check mark again. And just like I did to remove the 
inside opening of the jaw. I'm going to do that to remove the inside of what I just extruded. I will select the previous sketch, which was automatically hidden. From the mini toolbar, I can choose the extrude command. Right now, it is automatically removing material. Let's change the depth in the first direction to to selected, and I'll pick this surface over here. Once again, I will go to the Options tab so I can say, hey, let's offset from that surface and plug in the value that I want to use. That's good. It automatically went to the right direction. Let's add a side to depth of two selected and pick this inside surface. And again, we will offset the same value. And that looks good. So let's hit the check mark. Now to connect the jaws together, I'm going to create one more sketch. And for simplicity, when I'm creating the sketch, I want to use the same sketch plane and orientation reference as last time. So I can just click use previous. And let me go to, for some reason, it didn't give me that surface as the reference. Let me choose solve. Uh, let me go to my sketch orientation. And for this one, we're going to add in the sketch references to the silhouette edges once again. Let me close the references dialog box. And this sketch is just going to be a rectangle. And let's change this to 0.125. Hit the check mark. And now I'm going to extrude that sketch. And let's use two selected. Oh, yeah, by the way, a little uh, shortcut. You can drag the depth drag handle. And if you hold down the shift key, that's another way of getting to a two selected depth. Let's do that one more time. I will hold down the right mouse button to activate a side two depth. And when I'm dragging this around, I will hold down the shift key and highlight the surface that I want to use for two selected. And there you can see that it's using that in both cases. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And earlier, I did not create the whole feature. Let's create the whole feature right now. I'll turn on my axis display. And I'm going to create my hole located. I'm going to hold down the control key to select the axis and this surface. Right now, the diameter is way too big. I'm going to use a standard hole in this particular case because I want to get the thread surface inside of there. Uh, let's diameter is way too small. Let's change down over here. Uh, let's say I want to use a half inch. There we go, half inch dash 13. I'm using coarse threading. And for the depth, let's change this depth to through all. And that way I can have a through thread on here. Uh, it says top clearance. I really don't need top clearance. It doesn't hurt if I leave that checked, but I can uncheck it if I want to. Everything looks great in here. Let's hit the check mark or middle mouse button. And there you see the representation of the hole. And I automatically get a hole note. I will change to wireframe mode for a moment just to show you that we have a cosmetic thread surface inside of there generated because I use the standard hole with the option check to include the threaded surface. Let me go back to shading with edges. And the last thing to finish this off, let's throw in some fillets. I'll hit the round tool and I will select this edge over here. Hold down the control key and select this other edge. I'm going to use a value of an eighth of an inch. And then to create the fillets on the outside in the same feature, I'm not holding down the control key. I'll select this particular edge over here. So I'm getting another set. And let's make the outside radius a bit bigger. And I will hold down the control key to select the corresponding edge on the other side. That looks good. Let's finish off the round with a middle mouse button. So everything looks good. I've got the geometry that I want, but actually I'm not finished. I'm going to do a couple last things in order to make my model user friendly. Here you can see the different features inside of here. I'm going to start off by changing the names of these features. I'll come back when I am done. Oh, let me show you the first one. Select a feature, click on it again, and then you can type in the name that you want to use. Again, I like to choose names that will help people 
understand what they are doing. And again, I will come back when I finish renaming these different features. Okay, I am done renaming my various different features. One other thing I'm going to do, I have a few features that I created related to the jaw, and people don't need to see all those in the model tree, so I will use the shift key to select them, and then from the mini toolbar, click on the group command, and that way they are located here together. I'll call this group of features the jaw, and that way you can expand it, you can see the features inside, but again, it makes the model tree shorter and a little more user friendly for other people. All right, another thing that I am going to do. I suspect that later on I might want to create a family table of this uh, model. And so in that particular case, it would help if I start renaming some of the different dimensions. So I will select the pin sketch and hit the edit dimensions icon. We have three different dimensions in this sketch. By going to the Tools tab, I can click on Switch Dimensions. We can see that the names of the dimensions are D0, D1, and D2. Let's click on these and chart, start changing some of them. I'll click on the D1 dimension, and here I can change this to be called the Shank Center Length. And let's see, we also have the D0 dimension, and this is going to be for the ID. And the D2 dimension, let's call this one the OD. And let me deselect on the screen. Let me go to the pin extrude opening. With that one, once again, I will go to Edit Dimensions. I'm just going to change one other uh, dimension over here. We have the D8 dimension, and I'm going to rename that one to the Jaw Opening Width. And again, I would want to do that for any dimensions that someone else might want to use in relations, any ones that I would want to use in a family table, and just set it up so that, again, it's, it's nice and user-friendly. So there you go. That's how I modeled this particular clevis part. And so in the comments, let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.